All right, hey YouTube, I got you another SVDS video today. Um, I will be showing you how to upgrade this gun. But first, we're just going to show you. I'm going to show you what the base gun is. The base gun is obviously an SVD body with a folding stock, which is a paratrooper version. It's a very bare bones gun. It doesn't come up with a scope. It doesn't come up with a scope rail. No bipod or anything. So what we're going to do? We're going to fire off a few rounds using my scope. Even though that's part of the upgrade, we're just going to use it so, I, so we can compare the shots. And we're going to see how well the thing shoots without being upgraded. All right. Okay, now let's get started on the upgrades. First thing we're going to do is open up. Jump. Flip that back. This part comes off. And now you'll need a hex screwdriver. The same one, the same kind that comes with your um, scope mount will work. And there's two screws right there. There's the screwdriver. There we go. There we go. Careful because it's still the spring's still there, so we'll push back. Lift this up, pull this out. Alright, let me put this down for a second. Now, this is your M120 spring. Just pull this off, grab your M160. There will be a link to all these in the description. The side that has the coils closest to it. We'll go in the back. As you can see, this one's a little bit tighter than this side. All right, slide it on there. We'll put this back in the M160 box so we don't lose it, just in case we need it for something later. All right, don't lose these. Slide it back into the piston and the bolt. You can rest it there. See there'll be a little gap. I don't know if you can tell very well because the lighting's not that great out here. Okay, now you see there's two holes. Right there and right there. You have to slide this part onto the two holes. So just push it forward, hold it with your thumb until the two holes line up. Then put the screw in. If you push the screw down enough, it should get into place. And just start turning it. Okay, once you get the first one into place, you can let go of it. It doesn't have to be screwed in all the way either. You can screw it in about halfway, and it will hold. Then you'll see the other hole. Put the other screw in there. Here we go, make sure it's nice and tight. Now, if after you took this off, if you wanted to remove the piston for some reason, even though they're not really aftermarket or replaceable or anything, you have to take out this screw right here, standard Phillips. <clears throat> but just thought you'd like to know in case. All right, now we got our spring upgraded. You wanna put the cover back on, unless you wanna shoot like this, which is probably not a good idea. Slide this part in first, push it down, flip this back up, and you're good to go. Alright, so the next thing we're going to address is this wobbly hand grip here. I don't know if that's supposed to be, I don't even know what that is, but it's annoying me. So this is an easy fix too. Put this down. We're going to fold up the stock real quick. Alright. 
move over down here a little bit more. Push in this tab right here, and then pull it back, and then this entire piece comes out. Slide this forwards, and the hand you'll have access to the full hand grip. It's held together by a few pins, so be careful because they can easily come out and they can split apart. I'm eventually going to replace this when I get more money. I'm going to replace this, the uh, inner barrel, and the hop up, but that will be later. Okay, so what I use is like just a little piece of, I don't even know what this is, it's like a cardstock, not really cardstock, like the stuff that comes in the magazine packets, the little paper thing. It's pretty thick, it's thicker than a normal sheet of paper. So let's take one of those, wrap it around the bottom, and just push it closed. And now it shouldn't move, it. okay, now you gotta make sure this back part's lined up. And then push it until it's nice and tight. It should be a lot firmer now. Check the other side, as you can see on mine, it's a little bit out. You want to make it look all nice. If you want, you can use, you can paint that little piece of paper thing black so it looks, so it doesn't look odd, but I don't really care. Okay, line up with the back, push it through, that's good enough. Alright, now that we got it through all the way, you can replace this pin. There's a hole right here, make sure you can see through it so it's lined up. Oh, can't let me show you. It's really hard to do this showing it to the camera, but uh, there you go. All right, push this through. You have to squeeze it back a little bit more. This is it's a little bit thinner now. All right, curve up that hole, push it down a little bit, and you should be able to squeeze it in. There you go. Alright, all finished. Now let's try the handguard. See? It's hardly, it's not shaking like at all. The only thing you can hear is the frame shaking. Alright, now that that's done, we can move on to, we could move on to putting the scope on, but this scope and rail is pretty heavy. You don't have to get the same scope I did. I'm actually going to suggest a lower cost scope because I'm just crazy and I buy expensive stuff even though I don't need to. You can attach a laser here. Here's a broken laser I have for my pistol that's on there just for aesthetics. But we're going to do the scope last. After all the other upgrades. And I'm leaving my, and it doesn't come with a scope attached to the rail, you have to do that yourself. But uh, I'm just going to leave that guys up to you guys. I'm not going to show you how to attach the scope to the rail because that's not really necessary. Anyway, the next thing we're going to attach is the rubber butt pad. You say, it might say, well it already has a butt plate here, doesn't it? Well, this is metal. and I don't know if you can see very well, but when you're trying to have it against something, it might stay a little bit. But if you're wearing like a uh, thicker shirt or whatever, it slides really easily. And when you're trying to snipe from the shoulder, it's not very good. It just slides all over the place. It makes it a very unpleasant experience. So, why, so for $10 on Amazon, you can get one of these. They're made for M16s. I tried my best to measure it. I didn't really want to waste $10, but I bought it anyway. I'm doing this for you guys. Alright, so this is pretty easy. You might think it goes like this, because that's how it's supposed to go on like rifles in the um, M4 or M16, but we're going to actually use it upside down. You might want to know why, because I found that when closing the stock, you have not much clearance over here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll close it. See? There's really not that much space. So we're actually going to put it on upside down. Don't worry, it still stays secure and everything. Oops, my bad. Okay, so th this is what the other side looks like. Just stretch it around. Pull out the fins that are on the inside. If you want, you can trim them off a little bit. I'm just going to leave them like that because I don't really mind. So I can get you a better view. There you go. Now you can see it. Now, it doesn't slide n almost at all. This part's still a little wiggly. The stock part moves a tiny bit. But basically now we have a way more sturdy gun. This will improve your shooting tr dramatically from standing up. Okay, so you can put it on like that. Or, what I usually suggest is taking out the original metal butt pad. Fill it, it has standard Phillips screws. 
screws right off, and that way you'll have more space to work with. When standing up, sorry. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is the bipod. Let's close this so we can show you that it closes all the way. Sorry for the loud crashing noises. Push it down a little bit more than normal, and boom. There we go. And it doesn't wiggle at all now, so basically you got a completely sturdy, really quiet gun. If you're running with this, all you wanna hear is this back part clanging. It's a lot quieter now. Okay. Next thing is the bipod. This is pretty easy, but to balance it's going to be a tiny bit difficult. Here's what the bipod looks like closed. Um, you adjust these things, you pull it down, you can close it like this. So here's what we're going to do. Hit the switch, slides it open, put it on the barrel. Don't worry about having it straight right now, we can straighten it up afterwards. You slide this thing, twist this thing to the right to move it down, because we want to have it wide enough to go over the outer barrel. Okay, now just push it down, clicks on. Now we want to get it almost tight enough so, so it will still be able to move, but just so we can adjust it. Let me move the camera back. Alright, it's pretty tight now, as you can see it's moving just a little bit. Now this is how we'll balance it. Put your gun up like this. Make sure there's nothing under, either the front or the back. And from here, put it like this. You can actually look down the sights to try to line it up with something in the background. I'm just gonna do that off camera so you guys don't have to watch that. I'm lining up with a pole on the deck. All right, now that I know it's straight, we're straight for the most part because the outer barrel's not directly attached to the inner barrel, so it will move a little bit. We will tighten it up more. Okay, now it looks like it's good and tight. It doesn't look like it'll move, but if you're running around a lot, it will move. So we're gonna tighten it up a tiny bit more. Use that Allen key. You still have, oh sorry, I didn't show you the thing. Basically it looks tight, but it still might move a little bit if you're running. Use that Allen key, find the hole in the bipod wheel. I don't know if you can see it, there's a little hole here. You'll probably need a smaller Allen key, but you can also use a screwdriver. I suggest using an Allen key though, if you don't probably want to bend your screwdriver. Just turn it a little bit more until you can't turn it without anything. Well, you basically, just here you can't turn it. There you go. It's on there nice and tight. It wiggles a tiny bit, but like I said, that's the outer barrel. See? Oh, here we go. Alright, this is turning out to be a longer video than I expected. Anyway, so now you have the base gun upgraded. You got more stability, less wobble, better grip. Back here, now. We need some more mobility. So, here's an SKS slash AK sling mount. I'll show you how to attach this. The first points are going to go right here on the, I don't know what this tube's called, the gas return tube or whatever for a real uh, SVD. This top part here, if it's closed already, you'll have to turn this. If it's not closed or open like mine, you won't have to take it off. All right, then you'll see this brass tubing thing here. That's Zoom in. Alright. Fold the other piece over that. Now stick this piece in the middle. You can twist it a little bit with your fingers, but you'll probably want to use a screwdriver to make sure it's nice and tight. There 
we go, nice and tight. Now for the back. Let's try the bipod. All right, now we're down with that part. This. Okay, I want to fold down the bipod real quick. All right, so now we got the gun pretty well set up. The last thing to do is attach the scope. So, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is just you see this little tread here? Not tread. Crevice. Slide it up on the rail. Okay. Now we'll screw these four things in. Make sure it's pushed all the way forwards first. All right, you only have to do each one like after it's sufficient, the tight the first time, you only have to do it like one and a half, then maybe, maybe two more times like this until it can't move anymore. All right, so now you have a really nice upgraded gun. All right. 